were thinking about this new school, we, we, because Valley and Invicta are two schools on the same campus, one of our colleagues, who's the deputy head at Invicta Grammar School, Van Buey, knew someone in Singapore who knew about your school. We were so impressed with SST that, that, that when we got our heads around the application for the free school, which you've mentioned, uh, this became the inspiration for that bid. So what we don't want is a series of classrooms. We want space that you can adapt and students can adapt. And teachers, as Vic said, the mindset of teachers to do things differently. And if you're the pioneers in this, which you are, and you're world pioneers, we, you were your first offspring. We want to do the same in the UK. There's dad. <laughs> and there's granddad. <laughs> We've taken probably over, I'd say, 2,000 photographs between us of your school in every little nook and cranny. And we've got to be able to go back and say, we don't want, as Vic said there, the, the off-the-shelf school. We want something that they've developed in Singapore. And this is what the characteristics are. So we've got loads of photographs we're going to show them. Because I don't, I, don't I don't think we've seen rooms, we've seen spaces. Yes. Spaces for learning yes. as opposed to rooms. And those spaces are sometimes within what you could call a traditional classroom, yes. a traditional lab, but sometimes out on the college. The colleges are wide, the colleges are big spaces. It's the so flexibility of what we've seen. Yeah. So we've got to convince them that what you have is what we, our students need, not what they think they need. I think that you get the learning environment right. You know, you, you say you can't particularly teach creativity, it's hard to teach, but you can have a creative learning environment which, which actually encourages people to think creatively. So we saw a classroom today which had partition walls, but the partition walls were, were whiteboards where, where students could go and just, just put their thoughts down all over the place. And, you know, students have their own workspace for doing, you know, 3D work and that space being available for them all the time. What's been good this week is, is getting to know the teachers more and starting to, to untangle the kinds of skill sets and attitudes that they have. Because the philosophy here is very different to a mainstream school in Singapore and a mainstream school obviously back in back in the UK. Well the brief answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and, that's, and that's part of the inspiration of this trip. What we what we uh, understand critically going back is in planning uh, the programmes and, and the curricula for the new school is that what's, what's got to come out is something which is not viewed in the, in the UK model, what we would call vocational learning. So that people don't, people don't think to think that they're going to be sending their children to a school to do something which already exists. We want this school, A, it'll have a pioneering cohort and a, a pioneering staff, but, it, but it's going to have a pioneering curriculum as well. The message from that is, is actually, is you, you've got to teach people about, about the, the skill set and the flexibility to actually have, you know, to, to be able to adapt. Survival of the fittest, you know, the, the species that survives is the one that's most adaptable. And then therefore people need to be adaptable in, in their mindset so that when technologies do change and, and move on, they can move on with it. I think what you do, which um, is different, is that your programmes seem to be tailored to each cohort. So every new group of students, you're refining what you do and you're looking at them coming in at Sec 1 and leaving at Sec 4 and you, you look at that whole trajectory of their learning experience from when they come in. And that might be different because of their ability profile or, or other reasons, but you do that very well here. And I think we, would, we wouldn't shy away from looking at that approach. You need to have a mindset which says, well actually, you know, you want students who can, can cope with change, you want staff who can cope with change, and therefore at an institutional level, that's got to cope with change as well. And it shouldn't be uh, a threat 
to, to understand that, that the things are changing rapidly and that the pace of change will almost certainly get exponentially uh, more over time rather than slow down. Well, we're looking at uh, teacher and student exchange. We're, obviously over the next 18 months it will be about the staff because we need to, to work closely together in making sure that we get the right product back in the UK in terms of the school. Once the school's up and running, then, then clearly the, 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 the idea of a student uh, exchange can become a reality. Did you get his funky blue shoes in the, in the picture? <laughs> Good luck. See you later.